The information we are about to review and much more is contained in the machine operator's manual. Located in a storage compartment in the cab headliner or in a side compartment on canopy units, the manual should always be kept there for ready reference when periodic maintenance, safety, and operational questions arise. In addition, a special safety manual will accompany the operator's manual. It is your responsibility as the operator to read and become familiar with both before operating the machine. You will see safety alert symbols on the machine and in manuals. The words danger, warning, and caution are used to identify important safety messages. When you see these symbols, be alert to the possibility of serious injury or death. Always follow the written instructions in the safety message. Although we are showing a 310 SLHL unit, the daily checks and service locations are the same or similar for all L-Series backhoes. These daily procedures should be performed with the loader bucket sitting firmly on the ground. If the loader must be raised for service work, always make sure it's supported with the boom lock. Refer to the operator's manual for the proper procedure. Preparing for daily service begins on the left side of the machine. The toolbox on the left side of the machine contains the periodic maintenance chart and room to store hand tools such as a grease gun. On the inside lid of the toolbox is the periodic maintenance chart and diagram. It shows the locations and a listing of service requirements at specified intervals. For additional information, reference the operator's manual. Before we move on to the daily service checks, let's look at the batteries. If the machine is equipped with the optional battery disconnect and jump post, they will be located inside the toolbox. This allows the machine to be jump started without gaining access to the engine compartment. With the toolbox removed, we can see the batteries. When charging or removing the battery or batteries, disconnect the ground or negative cables first. This helps prevent damage to the electrical components and lessens the potential for sparks that could ignite battery gases. As you walk around the machine, check for trash in the radiator screen that could cause overheating of the engine or other components. Also, look for hydraulic leaks, frayed hoses, damaged tubes, missing clamps or rubbing hoses. The hydraulic oil level sight gauge is conveniently located just back of the tilt hood on the right side for easy ground level viewing. Oil is added through a fill port accessed under a lockable cover on the hood. To secure the hood in the daily service position, use the latch on the right side of the engine compartment. With the hood partially tilted, the engine oil dipstick can be accessed and the level checked. Engine oil is added through this easy to access color coded fill tube. Also here, you can check the fuel filters. If necessary, water can be drained from the system. To the far left is the color-coded transmission oil dipstick and fill tube. This check is performed with the transmission oil warm to operating temperature. Refer to the operator's manual for a list of preferred products when adding or replacing fluids. Wide slip-resistant steps help prevent slipping while climbing up or down. These steps also provide a place to clean your shoes before climbing onto the machine. It's important that you face the unit and maintain at least a three-point contact. Two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. Looking at the marks on the coolant recovery tank through this access, the operator can check the engine coolant level. If necessary, coolant can be added to the recovery tank. Fill with a mixture of clean, soft water and a permanent type low silicate ethylene glycol base antifreeze. When required, the air cleaner element can be removed by fully raising the hood and taking off this cover. Fueling the backhoe loader is quick and easy while standing on the ground. The fuel tank is equipped with a green quick fill neck and cap. Use only ultra low sulfur diesel. The DEF tank, indicated by the blue cap, is located under the latch. Be sure to fill with approved DEF fluid. It's a good practice to fill this tank at the same time you fill the diesel tank. When doing the daily checks, look around the machine for electrical, mechanical, or structural damage, missing bolts, excessive wear, or anything that might cause a failure at a critical moment. This inspection should include the ROPS and its fasteners. 
Also check for loose or missing wheel hardware. Check all four tires on both sides for cuts or problems that could cause potential downtime. And make sure the tires are properly inflated. Refer to the operator's manual for the correct tire pressures for your machine. Low tire pressure can make the unit less stable when carrying a load. Too much tire pressure makes the unit harder to handle on hard surfaces. Before operation, check and lubricate the loader pivot points and cylinders, the front axle oscillation pivot and steering pivots if applicable. Also lubricate the pivots and linkages in the backhoe and stabilizer area. Refer to the operator's manual or periodic maintenance chart for the locations and service intervals of the lubrication points. L-Series backhoes have outstanding visibility. On units equipped with a cab, be sure to take a moment to clean the glass so you can see where you are going and who is around you. A clean operator station goes a long way in promoting safe operation. This includes keeping things clear of the pedals and levers. This concludes the pre-start inspection and daily service of the machine. Wide slip-resistant steps help prevent slipping while entering or exiting the operator's station. These steps also provide a place to clean your shoes before climbing onto the machine. Handholds are large and strategically placed for easy entry and exit. It's important that you face the unit and maintain at least a three-point contact, two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. To keep you away from traffic or other hazards, you can enter the machine from the right side as well as the left. Forward and backward movement of the seat is done by lifting and holding either of these two levers and sliding the seat to the desired position and releasing. Pulling up on this lever allows the seat to swivel. This lever lets you adjust seat back angle. There is a lumbar control on the back of the seat. If your unit is equipped with the mechanical suspension seat, by turning the knob below the seat, you can make height and weight adjustments. If the unit is equipped with an air ride seat, a switch on the side console lets you adjust the height and weight sensitivity. To activate, press and release the top left button on the sealed switch module to energize the ignition and provide electrical power. A retractable seat belt comfortably and securely holds you in the seat. In the event of an overturn, that's where you want to stay. For these reasons, the seat belt should be kept in proper working order. Be aware of its condition and replace when necessary, at least every three years, regardless of appearance. Before operation, become familiar with the controls and their functions. If equipped with a tilt steering wheel, the angle of the steering wheel can be changed by pulling up on the lever on the column, moving the wheel to the desired angle, and releasing it. Behind the steering wheel to the right is a lever that controls the turn signals. The windshield wipers are engaged by twisting this lever, and the high beam lights are turned on when the lever is in the up position. Pushing the lever in will spray windshield washer fluid on the front window. On the left is the transmission control lever or TCL. A twist gear selector is located on the TCL. The horn is activated by pushing the TCL lever in. Floor controls include the foot throttle and the right and left brake pedals. These should be locked together before traveling at high speed. The service brakes on John Deere backhoes are self-adjusting and self-equalizing. This means, with both brakes locked together, the machine will stop smoothly without swerving. The left button is the differential lock. Used in poor traction conditions, depressing the pedal engages the lock. Releasing the pedal disengages it. On cab units, the windshield washer fill is located on the right of the front console. The console to your right has many functions. On the left is the sealed switch module. It controls many machine functions, including security. An owner can set up to 10 operator codes. In order to start the engine, a valid operator code needs to be entered using the small numbers on some of the module's buttons. Refer to the operator's manual for details. Pressing and releasing the top left button will energize the ignition and provide electrical power. 
After the display unit is initialized, press and hold the button to start the engine. Pressing the red engine stop button will shut off the engine. Note, if the engine is warm, the engine will drop to 900 RPM if it is not already, and the monitor will display a countdown timer. The engine will automatically shut down once the turbo cooldown process is completed. If the engine stop button is pressed and pressed again, the engine will shut down immediately, regardless of operating temperature. Next is the loader coupler button if equipped. Pressing the button for one second will retract the loader attachment pins for changing attachments. Once the attachment is in place, press and hold the button to extend the pins to lock the attachment. Always test to see if the attachment is secure before proceeding. The next button is the park brake button. The park brake is engaged with the light illuminated. Pressing the button will disengage the park brake and the light will go off. Another push and the park brake will engage. The park brake system used by John Deere has set a high standard for the industry. That's because when the park brake is applied, not only is the brake set, but the transmission is also neutralized. If an attempt is made to move the machine in either direction, with the park brake on, the transmission will not engage and the unit will not move. Since it won't move, the park brake is not damaged by trying to drive away with it on. When the button is turned off, the park brake is released. The transmission may now be activated and the unit can move. A very important feature provided by the park brake system is its automatic engagement. Anytime the engine stops, the park brake automatically engages. If the unit happens to be moving at the time, it comes to a stop. There are a few operational features operators should be aware of on the L-Series. For instance, if the transmission control lever is in forward or reverse, and the operator moves the seat out of the loader position with the park brake off, an alarm will sound, warning the operator to place the transmission control lever into neutral before swiveling the seat. Next to the park brake button is the hazard light button. Next is the rear wiper blade. It has three settings. With one press and one LED illuminated, the rear wipers are in intermittent mode. A second press with two LEDs illuminated and the wiper is in high speed mode. And a third press turns off the wipers and LEDs. The first button in the third row activates eco mode. Once this feature has been turned on in the monitor, engaging this mode will limit the engine to 2100 RPM in neutral through second gear and 2400 RPM in third and above with the seat in loader position and 2000 RPM with the seat in the backhoe position. This will make the machine more fuel efficient in lower impact applications. The middle button in the third row is the front light button. It has two settings. With one LED illuminated, the inner front work lights are on. Pressing the button again will turn off the inner front work lights. To activate the outer front work lights, push forward on the multifunction lever behind the right side of the steering wheel. Now, two LEDs will be illuminated, turning on the inner and outer front work lights. With the multifunction lever pushed forward, one press of the SSM button will turn all four lights on and off. The rear work light button has five settings. With one LED illuminated, the inner rear work lights are on. A second press will illuminate two LEDs and turn on the outer rear work lights. Another press will add the side dock rear lights with three LEDs illuminated. Another press turns off the inner and outer rear lights and leaves on the side dock rear lights. The far right LED is illuminated. A fifth press of the button will turn off all lights with no LEDs illuminated. The first button in the fourth row is the Loader Auxiliary Hydraulic button. This button enables and disables loader auxiliary function if equipped. Refer to the operator's manual for details. The next button is the Backhoe Control Pattern Select button. If equipped with pilot controls, it has two settings. With the left LED illuminated, the controls are in the backhoe pattern. With the right LED illuminated, the controls are in the excavator pattern. These two control types will be explained in a moment. The last button in the fourth row is the Backhoe Auxiliary Hydraulic button. This button enables and disables Backhoe Auxiliary function if equipped. Refer to the operator's manual for details. The bottom left button is for ride control. 
To turn on ride control if equipped, press and release to activate and illuminate the LED. Ride control improves machine ride and reduces tire flexing when traveling over rough terrain at a high speed with a loaded bucket or when transporting with an empty bucket. Do not activate ride control when engaging the pile with the loader bucket, as this will make it difficult to completely fill the loader bucket. With ride control engaged, the front end of the machine will not remain raised if lifted off the ground with the front loader. The front end of the machine will drop back to the ground. The next button is the automatic transmission button. Pressing the button will illuminate the light and engage the transmission into auto 2D mode. The transmission will start in second gear and upshift to the highest gear selected on the transmission control lever depending upon speed and load. It will never downshift to first gear unless first gear is selected on the transmission control lever. Pressing the button will switch the transmission back into manual mode with no lights illuminated. Pressing the bottom right button will engage lift mode with the seat in the backhoe position and the TCL in neutral. To the right of the sealed switch module is the display monitor. The display monitor has three gauges, engine coolant temperature, transmission oil temperature, and fuel level. Pressing the start button will energize the display. Let's freeze the screen for a moment to look at the display. Icons include the engine stop indicator, engine oil pressure indicator, hydraulic oil temperature indicator, engine alternator voltage indicator, mechanical front wheel drive indicator, wait to start indicator, diagnostic code indicator, park brake indicator, hydraulic oil filter restriction indicator, exhaust filter cleaning indicator, hydraulic oil temperature indicator, and pilot enable indicator. During operation, if one of the system indicator lights comes on, a problem is developing in that system. It's not necessary to stop the engine, but the cause should be investigated as soon as possible when it is safe to do so. If the red stop engine indicator illuminates and the alarm sounds, stop the engine immediately and investigate the cause. The display window shows the transmission gear and engine RPM. The bottom right display is selectable. Using the arrow buttons at the right, you can choose to display DEF level, machine hours, job hours, battery voltage, and transmission temperature. Pressing the menu button allows you to choose a variety of machine functions in the display. Refer to the operator's manual for details. Below the SSM and display monitor, there are switches for the mechanical front wheel drive if equipped, beacon if equipped, air suspension seat height adjustment if equipped, defroster, heater, and air conditioner if equipped, temperature control knob if equipped, blower speed knob if equipped, and the engine speed control knob. At the bottom of the right console is a storage compartment. On canopy units, a vandal protection cover is lockable and will help to prevent damage when the machine must be left unattended. On the front of the right console is one 12-volt power plug. Below is the access for the fuses and relays. A chart of the fuse designations and sizes is on the inside of the cover. The loader control lever is conveniently located for low effort, short throw operation. Backward movement controls the boom rays. Forward movement controls boom lower. Pushing the lever forward into detent places the boom in the float position. This allows the bucket to follow the contour of the ground, which is helpful when back dragging. Right and left movement controls the bucket. Moving the lever diagonally will activate two functions at once. The loader is equipped with a return to dig feature. When you move the loader lever to a left detent, the bucket will automatically rotate back to the digging position. Refer to the operator's manual for details for setting the bucket angle for return to dig.
a clutch cutoff button is mounted on the loader control grip. Depressing the clutch cutoff button stops the flow of power to the wheels. This is helpful in loading applications when engine power is needed for faster hydraulics to speed cycle times. The loader grip can be equipped with an auxiliary hydraulic control roller. The button on the front side of the lever is used for a momentary engagement of the front wheel drive. It is engaged as long as the trigger is depressed. It disengages when the trigger is released. The button next to clutch disconnect is the quick shift button. There are two settings in the monitor that enable the operator to either shift up, down, or between two gears when the button is pressed. On cab units, there is excellent visibility. The cab door glass in both doors can be opened for maximum ventilation. As we saw earlier, rotating the seat from loader to backhoe operation is easy. There is ample, unobstructed knee and footroom and cab space. The three-piece rear window stores conveniently without obstructing your view. The side windows can also be opened to add ventilation. The window is easily secured to prevent damage. The John Deere 310 SL, 310 SLHL, and 410L backhoes come equipped with standard two-lever backhoe controls. However, if desired, four-lever or three-lever with foot swing control patterns can be installed. Pilot controls are optional on the 310 SL and 410L and standard on the 310 SLHL. Note, both pilot consoles must be in the stored position to rotate the seat. Once the seat is rotated, the controllers can be moved into operating position. Each console uses a gas cylinder to hold them securely in either position. Each console also has an adjustable wrist rest to provide comfort when operating the controls. A button on the right controller enables and disables the pilot controls. Pilot controls are automatically disabled when the seat is moved from backhoe or loader positions. If the pilot control enable switch is pressed while the seat is in the loader position, an audible alarm will sound and the monitor will display backhoe active. The backhoe pilot controls are now active. For your convenience, the stabilizer controls are located together so that both functions can be easily actuated with one hand from either seat position. As shown earlier, there is a button on the SSM to change the pilot control pattern. When in backhoe pattern, the left lever controls the boom and swing, and the right lever controls the dipper stick and bucket. In the excavator mode, the left lever controls dipper stick and swing, and the right lever controls boom and bucket. Always test to verify the pattern selected before operation. In front of the operator is the boom lock unlock lever. If the unit is equipped with optional rear auxiliary hydraulics, the system is controlled by a button on the right panel as shown earlier. On 310 SLHL and 410L machines, a roller located on the left pilot lever controls the auxiliary hydraulics. The button will sound the horn. In addition, a roller on the right pilot lever controls the extension and retraction of the extendable dipper stick if so equipped. The button on the right pilot lever turns the selective flow auxiliary on and off. On 310 SL machines, a pedal located on the left side of the floor controls the auxiliary hydraulics. And a pedal on the right side of the floor controls the extension and retraction of the extendable dipper stick, if so equipped. A locking pin can be installed to keep the dipper from extending. When backhoe work is done, you should place the boom in the transport position. While raising the boom, Pull the boom lock lever back to lift the lock mechanism. When the boom is against the stop, release the lever to secure the boom vertically. This provides optimum stability during loader operation and transport. It's important that the lock be adjusted properly for a tight fit. The boom is still able to swing if maneuverability is required in certain operating conditions. You can prevent the boom from swinging by installing the swing lock pin from the operator's seat.
All John Deere backhoes, whether with cab or canopy, provide rollover protection for the operator. Cab units are pressurized for a cleaner work environment. Both external and internal air circulates through filters. Built-in defroster vents assure excellent airflow to reduce window fogging. To help you see around the unit, a wide-angle interior rear-view mirror is standard equipment. If installed, the sun visor is located here. Optional outside mirrors are also available. Make sure all mirrors are adjusted before operation. Overhead in cab units are a dome light and, if equipped, a radio. This concludes the controls and safety system portion of this video. It's recommended you review the operator's manual to become more familiar with the machine controls and features before operating. Wide slip resistant steps help prevent slipping while entering or exiting the operator station. These steps also provide a place to clean your shoes before climbing onto the machine. Handholds are large and strategically placed for easy entry and exit. It's important that you face the unit and maintain at least a three point contact two hands and a foot, or two feet and a hand. To keep you away from traffic or other hazards, you can enter the machine from the right side as well as the left. Forward and backward movement of the seat is done by lifting and holding either of these two levers and sliding the seat to the desired position and releasing. Pulling up on this lever allows the seat to swivel. This lever lets you adjust the seat back angle. There is lumbar control on the back of the seat. If your unit is equipped with a mechanical suspension seat, by turning the knob below the seat, you can make height and weight adjustments. If the unit is equipped with an air ride seat, a switch on the side console lets you adjust the height and weight sensitivity. To activate, the key switch needs to be in the on position. A retractable seat belt comfortably and securely holds you in the seat. In the event of an overturn, that's where you want to stay. For these reasons, the seat belt should be kept in proper working order. Be aware of its condition and replace when necessary, at least every three years regardless of appearance. Before operation, become familiar with the controls and their functions. If equipped with a tilt steering wheel, the angle of the steering wheel can be changed by pulling up on the lever on the column, moving the wheel to the desired angle, and releasing it. Behind the steering wheel is the turn signal switch. On the left is the transmission control lever, or TCL. There is also the twist gear selector and horn. Floor controls include the foot throttle and the right and left brake pedals. These should be locked together before traveling at high speed. The service brakes on John Deere backhoes are self-adjusting and self-equalizing. This means with both brakes locked together, the machine will stop smoothly without swerving. The left button is the differential lock. Used in poor traction conditions, depressing the pedal engages the lock. Releasing the pedal disengages it. On cab units, the windshield washer fill is located on the right side of the front console. The right side console on canopy units has a lockable vandal protection cover. This will help to prevent damage when the machine must be left unattended. The right console is a convenient location for the key switch. To the right is the park brake switch. Above the key switch is the mechanical front wheel drive on off switch if equipped. Next are the front work light switch, rear work light switch, and side dock switch. Pressing the button once turns on the outside work lights, 
Pressing it twice will turn on all of the work lights. To the right are the horn button, engine throttle knob, and hazard light switch. If the unit is equipped with a beacon, that on-off switch would be located here. If equipped with a cab, next is the front wiper switch. Pressing the switch to the first detent will place the wiper in slow mode. Pressing the top of the switch all the way will put the wiper in fast mode. Pressing and holding the top of the next switch will spray washer fluid on the front window. The last switch to the right is for the rear wiper. On the bottom row, if equipped with a cab, are the temperature control, blower fan control and heater, defroster and air conditioning control. Next is the ride control on off switch if equipped. Ride control improves machine ride and reduces tire flexing when traveling over rough terrain at high speed with a loaded bucket or when roading with an empty bucket. Do not activate ride control when engaging the pile with the loader bucket, as this will make it difficult to completely fill the loader bucket. With ride control engaged, the front end of the machine will not remain raised if lifted off the ground with the front loader. The front end of the machine will drop back to the ground. If equipped, the auxiliary hydraulic switch will be located in this location. If the 310L is equipped with pilot controls, a pilot control select switch will be located here. Refer to the operator's manual for details of the use of these switches. The display monitor is at the top of the right console. Turning the key to on will bulb check the icons in the monitor. Let's freeze the screen to show what they are. Stop indicator, torque converter temperature indicator, engine coolant temperature indicator, engine air filter restriction indicator, hydraulic oil filter restriction indicator, diagnostic code indicator, engine oil pressure indicator, engine alternator voltage indicator, park brake indicator, weight to start indicator, exhaust filter cleaning indicator, mechanical front wheel drive indicator if equipped, and pilot enable indicator if equipped. During operation, if one of the system indicator lights comes on, a problem is developing in that system. It's not necessary to stop the engine, but the cause should be investigated as soon as possible when it is safe to do so. If the red stop engine indicator illuminates and the alarm sounds, stop the engine immediately and investigate the cause. To the left of the icons are the fuel level and the engine coolant temperature gauges. On the far left, the display window shows the transmission gear and engine RPM. The bottom right display is selectable. Using the arrow buttons at the left, you can choose to display the DEF level, transmission oil temperature, machine hours, job hours, and battery. Pressing the menu button allows you to choose a variety of machine functions in the display. Refer to the operator's manual for details. At the bottom of the right console is a storage compartment. On the front of the right console is a 12 volt power plug. Below is the access for the fuses and relays. A chart of the fuse designations and sizes is on the inside of the cover. There are a few operational features operators should be aware of on the L-Series. For instance, if the transmission control lever is in the forward or reverse, and the operator moves the seat out of the loader position with the park brake off, an alarm will sound warning the operator to place the TCL into neutral. The park brake system used by John Deere has set a high standard for the industry. That's because when the park brake is applied, not only is the brake set, but the transmission is also neutralized. If an attempt is made to move the machine in either direction, with the park brake on, the transmission will not engage and the unit will not move. Since it won't move, the park brake is not damaged by trying to drive away with it on. When the switch is turned off, the park brake is released, 
The transmission may now be activated and the unit can move. A very important feature provided by the park brake system is its automatic engagement. Anytime the engine stops, the park brake automatically engages. If the unit happens to be moving at the time, it will come to a stop. If the unit is shut down with the park brake switch in the off position, it must be cycled on and off after engine restart to disengage the park brake. The loader control lever is conveniently located for low effort, short throw operation. Backward movement controls the boom rays. Forward movement controls boom lower. Pushing the lever forward into detent places the boom into the float position. This allows the bucket to follow the contour of the ground, which is helpful when back dragging. Right and left movement controls the bucket. Moving the lever diagonally will activate two functions at once. The loader is equipped with a return to dig feature. When you move the loader lever to a left detent, the bucket will automatically rotate back to the digging position. Refer to the operator's manual for details for setting the bucket angle for return to dig. A clutch cutoff switch is mounted on the loader control grip. Depressing the clutch cutoff button stops the flow of power to the wheels. This is helpful in loading applications when engine power is needed for faster hydraulics to speed cycle times. In cab units, there is excellent visibility. The cab door glass in both doors can be opened for maximum ventilation. As we saw earlier, rotating the seat from loader to backhoe position is easy. There is ample, unobstructed knee and footroom and cab space. The three-piece rear window stores conveniently without obstructing your view. The side windows can also be opened to add ventilation. The window is easily secured to prevent damage. For your convenience, the stabilizer controls are located together so that both functions can be easily actuated with one hand from either seat position. John Deere backhoes come equipped with standard two-lever backhoe controls. However, if desired, four-lever or three-lever with foot swing control patterns can be installed. The 310L can also be equipped with pilot backhoe controls. With this configuration, both pilot consoles must be in the stored position to rotate the seat. Once the seat is rotated, the controllers can be moved into the operating position. Each console uses a gas cylinder to hold them securely in either position. Each console also has an adjustable wrist rest to provide comfort when operating the controls. A switch on the right controller enables and disables the pilot controls. Pilot controls are automatically disabled when the seat is moved from backhoe or loader positions. If the pilot control enable switch is pressed while the seat is in the loader position, an audible alarm will sound and the monitor will display backhoe active. The backhoe pilot controls are now active. As mentioned earlier, there is a switch on the right console to change the control pattern between backhoe and excavator. When in the backhoe pattern, the left lever controls the boom and swing, and the right lever controls the dipper stick and bucket. In the excavator pattern, the left lever controls dipper stick and swing, and the right lever controls boom and bucket. Always test to verify the pattern selected before operating. If the unit is equipped with optional rear auxiliary hydraulics, the system is activated by a switch on the right panel, and a pedal located to the left of the backhoe console. Refer to the operator's manual for details. A pedal to the right of the backhoe console controls the extension and retraction of the extendable dipper stick if equipped. A locking pin can be installed to keep the dipper from extending. When the backhoe work is done, you should place the boom in the transport position. 
While raising the boom, pull the boom lock lever back to lift the lock mechanism. When the boom is against the stop, release the lever to secure the boom vertically. This provides optimum stability during loader operation and transport. It's important that the lock is adjusted properly for a tight fit. The boom is still able to swing if maneuverability is required in certain operating conditions. You can prevent the boom from swinging by installing the swing lock pin from the operator's seat. All John Deere backhoes, whether cab or canopy, provide rollover protection for the operator. Cab units are pressurized for a cleaner work environment. Both external and internal air circulates through filters. Built-in defroster vents assure excellent airflow to reduce window fogging. To help you see around the unit, a wide-angle interior rear-view mirror is standard equipment. If installed, the sun visor is located here. Overhead and cab units are a dome light and radio if equipped. Optional outside mirrors are also available. Make sure all mirrors are adjusted before operation. This concludes the controls and safety system portion of this video. It is recommended you review the operator's manual to become more familiar with the machine controls and features before operating. To lower engine emissions and comply with governmental regulation standards, your L-Series backhoe is equipped with a final Tier 4 emission engine. Most of the advancements are designed not to be noticed. However, operators should have a general understanding of how the system works and the various machine monitor displays associated with it. The engine uses an integrated exhaust filter. This one or two-part exhaust filter contains a diesel oxidation catalyst, DOC only, on 310L through 410L machines and a diesel particulate filter, DPF, on the 710L machines. The DOC reacts with exhaust gases to reduce carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and some particulate matter. The downstream DPF forces exhaust gases to flow through porous channel walls, trapping and holding the remaining PM soot. When soot builds up within the DPF to the point that it restricts the exhaust flow, it is necessary to remove the soot. Trapped particles are oxidized with increased exhaust heat through a cleaning process called regeneration. There are four types of filter regeneration cleaning that can occur. Passive, auto, parked, and service. Passive filter cleaning takes place during normal machine operation. It does not require any operator interaction and has no impact on machine operation. In applications where the unit runs under heavy loads, the exhaust heat is high enough to naturally clean soot buildup. However, operating with lower workloads and lower exhaust temperatures, the DPF soot level will begin to build. When the soot level reaches a moderate level, auto cleaning is initiated. The engine control unit will begin to increase the temperature of the exhaust to clean the filter. No operator interaction is needed. The exhaust filter cleaning indicator will light up on the monitor to signify that automatic filter cleaning is in process. When cleaning is complete, the indicator light will automatically turn off. Automatic filter cleaning can be disabled, but it is not recommended under most operating conditions. Passive regeneration will continue, but the operator needs to return the system to auto as soon as conditions permit to avoid soot buildup in the exhaust filter. Refer to the operator's manual for details for disabling and enabling automatic cleaning. The soot level of the exhaust filter can be checked in the menu. Refer to the operator's manual for details on specific monitor warnings and actions required when filter restriction becomes high and very high. If filter restriction reaches the high soot level, the monitor will warn the operator that the filter is restricted. If warnings are repeatedly ignored, the soot level will increase to very high. At this point, engine power will be derated and machine performance will be reduced. A parked filter cleaning should be initiated. To perform a parked filter cleaning, the unit should be parked in an open area with the attachment setting on the ground. The park brake needs to be applied, the FNR in neutral, and the engine speed at idle. The monitor will guide the operator through the process. Refer to the operator's manual for exact details. Parked filter cleaning will stop if the park brake is released, the FNR is moved into gear, engine RPM is increased, the engine is stopped, 
runs out of fuel, or the cleaning times out at 45 minutes. If a parked filter cleaning is not performed, the soot level will continue to rise and reach the service level. The engine should be stopped as soon as possible. It is recommended that you contact your dealer or other qualified service provider to perform a service filter cleaning. Since L-Series backhoes are equipped with a final Tier 4 emission engine, an additional technology is added to reduce the emission of nitrogen oxides referred to as NOx. Diesel exhaust fluid, referred to as DEF, is injected into the exhaust after the DOC-DPF filter that was just explained. A chemical reaction occurs that changes the NOx into nitrogen and water. Any remaining ammonia is removed by passing it through a filter. The backhoe has a separate tank for the DEF. The fill is located under the latch. It is a good practice to fill the DEF tank at the same time you fill the diesel fuel tank. Under no circumstances should DEF be put into the fuel tank. It's corrosive to steel and will ruin the fuel injection system if the engine is run. A DEF gauge is located in the monitor. Under normal operating conditions, if you run out of DEF, the engine will be significantly derated. Refer to the operator's manual for more details. By maintaining the DEF fluid level and keeping the machine in the automatic filter cleaning enabled mode, most of the filter cleaning processes happen behind the scenes with no or minimal impact on the operator or machine performance. The design of the John Deere L-Series backhoe reflects a lot of consideration for safety. But does this automatically ensure safety on the job site? There are many pieces of safety equipment on the backhoe loader. But there is no assurance that the safety equipment will get the job done unless you use the safety equipment that's on the unit. One of the most important pieces of safety equipment is your seat belt. Buckle up before you start the engine. The rollover protective structure by itself does not assure your safety in the event of an overturn. If you are not wearing your seat belt, you could be thrown and crushed. Don't operate under the mistaken impression that if a machine overturns, you can hold on or jump free. That impression may be fatal. Before starting out, make a quick check of the operational controls. It's better to take a moment now than to find out at a critical moment when it's too late to avoid an accident. The backup alarm alerts bystanders that your machine is changing directions. Keep it operational. Even though the backup alarm is sounding, you still need to look behind you before and while backing up. Bystanders may ignore the alarm, especially in busy, noisy areas. As was mentioned, it's up to you to use your safety equipment. And it's also up to you to use good safety judgment. As the operator, you have a primary responsibility for the actions of the backhoe. Always think about what you have to do before you do it. Never stop thinking about what is the safe thing to do, not only for yourself, but also for the people around you. This brings up another important point. There's only one seat and seat belt in the backhoe, and that's for you, the operator. Don't carry passengers. When working in congested areas, reduce your speed. You never know what might pop out in front of you. You should also reduce your travel speed when in rough terrain or when carrying a heavy load. No matter what the terrain, always carry your bucket low for better stability and visibility. This is particularly true when working on slopes. It is preferable to back up steep slopes. With most of the weight of the backhoe on the rear of the machine, backing up the slope will help keep the front end on the ground. Always drive up or down the slope vertically. Avoid turning on a slope. That's when a machine is least stable. It may overturn. When using the loader, keep the loading surface smooth and level. This not only makes it easier to load the truck, but also avoids the possibility of tip over when the loader is being raised to dump. To prevent cave-ins near an excavation, work perpendicular to it or at a slight angle. This will keep extra weight away from the edge and limit cave-ins. 
When planning to dig a trench, it is important to always call ahead so underground utilities can be located and appropriately marked on your job site. In the United States, one easy phone call to 811 starts the process to get your underground utility lines marked for free. When you call 811 from anywhere in the country, your call will be routed to your local one call center. When setting up to dig, be sure the stabilizers have a solid base to rest on. To help prevent cave ins, be sure to place the spoil pile at least three feet away from the excavation, even farther away if the excavation is deep. Also, in loose soil, the spoil pile should be placed farther away to help prevent cave ins. When digging on a slope, place the soil pile on the upper side of the trench. The machine is more stable when swinging uphill, and it makes it easier to backfill. When shutting down the unit, there are a few simple procedures that you should follow. The machine should be parked on a level surface. Move the TCL to neutral and set the park brake. Lower the front attachment to the ground. If the unit does not have the turbo cool down feature, operate the engine at half speed without load for a couple of minutes. This will help cool down the turbocharger. Slow the engine to low idle before stopping the engine. For units equipped with turbo cool down, simply press the stop button. The engine will automatically stop after cool down if necessary. After engine shutdown, move the hydraulic control levers to release the pressure so you know for sure that the attachments will not be moving. If you are shutting down for the day, it's a good idea to lock up the machine against vandalism. You never know who might drop by. If you plan to haul the unit, you should always use caution when loading it on or off a trailer. This is one of the most likely times for a tipping accident. Be sure the trailer is sitting on a firm, flat surface. The bed should be clean of debris. Use chalk blocks against the trailer wheels to help prevent the trailer from moving. Make sure the ramp angle is not too steep. Install the extendable dipper stick locking pin if equipped and engage the backhoe swing lock. You should always fasten your seat belt before loading or unloading in case of an overturn. The brakes should be locked together before loading. It is recommended that you have a spotter to help line up the backhoe. Drive slowly onto the ramps and trailer. To keep you straight and on target, some operators line up on a board or other object on the trailer. The center line of the machine should be on the center line of the trailer. The unit should also be balanced fore and aft on the trailer. Once on the trailer, move the TCL to neutral, set the park brake, and lower the attachments. This may also include lowering the backhoe. After cool down, shut off the engine and release the hydraulic pressure on the attachments. As before, lock up the unit against vandalism. Built-in tie-down loops on the L-Series allow you to easily use a chain or other device to fasten each corner of the unit to the trailer. Do not place chains or other devices over or against hydraulic lines or hoses. Use an appropriate load binder to secure the unit. Before you haul the machine, be sure of the height from the top of the load to the ground. It's better to know your limitations beforehand rather than learning the hard way after you hit something. As we've seen, John Deere L-Series backhoe loaders are equipped with many safety features and systems. But it's up to you, the operator, to use them. You have to think about every move you make before you make it. It doesn't matter how much experience you have, it only takes one mistake to make a difference in your life or in the lives of others. Statistics show that of all the accidents reported, over 90% of the operators hurt or killed were listed as experienced. Accidents don't always happen to the other guy. That other guy could be you.